Eminence Front X5 and Larry Word here coming to you from my campsite. Hey, uh, giving you a little intro to this next video. I did this video almost two years ago, and uh, it's of a place called Manzanar out in uh, Southern California, off of the 395. There's two ravens, like, fighting in the air. You'll hear them in a second. They're yakking away. Um, it's of Manzanar, and... Uh, it's been hard for me to release this one. I've been bickering with myself, going back and forth with what's going on with it. And uh, yeah, it's dive bombing now. That's nice acrobatic moves there. But this video, check this out. During this COVID-19, maybe because it kind of puts you in their mindset and the self-quarantine thing going on. Check this out. Menzanar. Thanks for tuning in. I'm looking for Patreon members. Please, if you have the wherewithal, please... Looking for some Patreon memberships. Thank you very much. Enjoy this, this little clip. We're over at Manzanar, the Japanese-American concentration camp, or one of many. But uh, let's go take a tour of what the inside of one of these barracks look like. Nice little illustration depicting, uh, I guess, some boys playing basketball inside the concentration camp. Wow. Let's go take a look. Is it hot in there? Not, not bad, bad, no, because it's not in the sun. It actually feels hotter out here. I, I was sitting in the car going, I'm not going out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I went, now I'm going in. Carl, <laughs> do you want to go down to the other yeah, side? Sure. Sorry. Oh, is it in half? Cut in half? Yeah, this is the block manager. Oh. You know, it's not all that bad, <laughs> heat-wise. The construction of this is pretty solid. Great displays. The construction is very solid. I don't know if that's because it's this particular recreation or if it's really a good idea of what it was like here. Actually, you can kind of see the construction here. So these little cross members coming down, it's this guy here which would mean the ceilings are missing from here. So the ceilings would go up on top here. Yeah, interesting. See the slats coming down here as well. It stays. Very cool. One camp, 36 blocks, 10,000 people. Whew. Block manager's office.
So let's take a look inside. It appears they could house about eight or nine people in there. I don't know if it's two or three families per, but man, that's difficult. Well, it looks like the living conditions were actually pretty good. However, you're not free. Who cares how good the living conditions were? If I had to live in there, I would go nuts. I would go nuts. Because I'm a hardhead. That would eat me alive living in there. I'm assuming you'd be sharing with two or three, possibly four families in one barracks. You could hear everything everyone was saying in there. Not a good thing. No, I think I'll walk away from the barracks. What do you guys think? We're walking over to the latrine. There's a men's latrine. Nothing but a foundation. <laughs> but the women's latrine, you can totally see. Let's go check that out. So I was reading in the barracks just now that first when they first got here, they got here in the middle of a dust storm and the only way to get the dust out of their eyes is to keep crying. That's sad. So this is the women's latrine. Go check it out. This is where you'd wash. What's interesting about this here is this is very similar to what I was, uh, what I recall seeing in Japan in school. You'd wash in a big sink like that. Well, that sucks. Absolutely no privacy. I had to check. <laughs> that doesn't explain it all, though. What's on the other side of that? There's something, there's a wall there. Pretty harsh situation there. This must be where the water heater is.
laundry room. Looks like more barracks. We'll scoop over here real quick. Check out what's going on. Is this the mess hall or? I can't read from here, but let's go check it out. It looks like a mess hall. There's an ironing room here, foundation of. I know guys, it's like my normal explorers, nothing but uh, remnants of a foundation. Meals for the masses. Mess Hall Kitchen number 14. Oh, they really got this down, even down to the three chimneys over here. And this one, one here. Yeah, this is pretty much it. Let's go get some food. Some grub in a concentration camp. Oh, wow. Tough, tough going, real tough. Huge oven, damn, that thing's big. That's why it had uh, the three chimneys. Very interesting. Staying clean was an issue. Oh, we can't take them. I was going to have a, a meal and sit down. Slop suey? I like sitting by windows, so I'd probably pick this side. PPJ? Wash your hands. 
No, they, they seriously, they, they didn't have running water, I guess, so they put these sinks yeah. in. That's, that's scary. Can you imagine that? No. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, right? So I used to, oh man, I used to grow their own food. Man. Well, they made mochi here? Making mochi here, pounded rice. Very cool. It is hot in here, folks. That's the mess hall. That's amazing. That is amazing. Military barracks, but uh, quickly constructed and uh, yeah, not very comfortable. Let's hop in the car and travel a little bit within this one square mile concentration camp here in California and see what we can see. You know, me being Japanese American myself, this hits really close to home, you know. Yeah. Go check it out. I mean, a right, right after block thirty one, we're going, I believe, west. John Shepherd Ranch. Let's go check this out. As I walk my way towards the billboard here, just some thought. The The whole idea of this place is scary, um, but it happened. And, well, I hope this never happens again. It's not cool. Shepherd Ranch. Looks like there was a building here. It was in 1863 that the parents set out on a great adventure. Packed their goods in a wagon, hitched a team. Long road trip to Owens Valley. The drama of our frontier community began. Lee Shepherd. Let me tell you folks, this heat, this heat is intense.
looking at heaven. So a shepherd's ranch looks like it was a just that a ranch. The owner uh, supplied all kinds of stuff to the miners out here. What the heck is this? I don't even know. Wild. I mean, why would there be an opening? I can't figure out why someone would make this. I mean, a lot of work went into that. Maybe another oven? Hard to tell. A lot of glass in the ground. All my training out in uh, <laughs> the desert taught me to look at the ground a lot, but uh, you can't pick anything up out here. It's all part of the national park. Yeah, you can wander these grounds on your f on foot everywhere. You just can't drive everywhere. Got to stay to the blacktop, but. Uh, Every once in a while there's a stop and little trails that lead you into places like this. It's kind of like an explorer, but it's kind of laid out for you. That's interesting. Anywho, let's go to the next spot. Block 34 Garden. Take a walk here and see what the garden's all about. I almost stepped on the lizard. So these are the foundations of the camouflage buildings. They would make camouflage netting here in these four buildings. Too short, too long. Short, the short ones are on the ends. The two long foundations are in the center. There's not a lot to show you here, except the foundations. Pretty amazing that they're even here. It's round circles on the ground. So this was a short. So the Japanese American concentration camp workers were making camouflage netting for the United States military, who happened to be keeping them locked up. It's messed up. There's something not right with that. Man, there's so many nails in the ground here. It looks like twigs. These are like, there's this thousands and thousands of nails just right here. I mean, God, they're friggin' everywhere. Okay, enough bitching and moaning about nails. Just hope I don't step on one. I've had things come right through the bottom of these shoes, so I'm kind of, you know, sketch with that stuff. Okay, here's one of the longer uh, buildings. I would assume long because it was a long piece of netting. It's kind of fun being out here just wandering around the remains of these sites. They allow us to do this. 
can't take a thing. They're very clear about that. <laughs> not, there's a, not like there's a lot to take, maybe a nail or two, but there's nothing out here, folks. It's just the memory of something bad, bad happening in the United States. It should have never happened. One thing I guess we don't talk about is how, well, I'll save that thought. I'm going into the wind now, but it's so bright out, I can't really see the monitor on the camera. Um, it's just too bright. I got it on full brightness too. It's just not cutting it. Foundation's crushed in right there. One thing that that's on my mind about this place is the fact that the people who were put into these concentration camps. You know, I've, I haven't heard any stories about, you know, a prisoner. Let's call it that. That's, that's what they were. They were prisoners, um, American prisoners in America, because they're Japanese American. Um, you don't hear stories about them like fighting the United States government, suing them for everything that this country is worth. You just get people telling their stories about this place and how it shouldn't happen again. Well, that's pretty damn noble for anyone or family to go through what these people went through in the United States. It's nuts. No one should have to go through that. I just got a thorn in my shoe. You just don't hear about something like that happening where a Japanese American went after the United States. Because they call it home. Why would they do that to their own home? Kind of goes along with what the Japanese kind of think. Society first. Society first. Way off in the distance, you can see the barracks. And well, between here and there, it would be full of barracks. 10,000 people lived here, folks. 10,000 people. So they had their factories, they had their, their mess halls, they had their Buddhist temples. They had gardens. They had a cemetery. All in this one square mile area, they called home for all of the war. Wow. Some strong, strong people there. It's actually quite beautiful out here. Oh, look, rusted barrel, of course, right? It's actually beautiful out here. And if it weren't for all the bad history, it would be a bad place to live. Minus the heat. Of course, the freezing temperatures in the winter too. But it's beautiful out here. 
if I can endure the heat and the cold for this kind of beauty. But I couldn't, I couldn't take being in a concentration camp. I just couldn't do it. Well, anyway, it's, it's amazing being here. There's uh, one more spot I'd like to check out, one or two, and uh, we'll be on our way. But this is just an amazing place. So we're making our way over to the cemetery in Manzanar. So obviously people died when you put, you know, 10,000 people in one camp. People are going to die over the course of a couple of years during World War II. Old age, just natural things happen, they die. So there's a cemetery just outside of the uh, Manzanar concentration camp. I'm walking up to it now. Uh, it's beautiful. It's stunning, to be honest with you. What I'm looking at is pretty amazing. Very Japanese, very Zen. And it's making my hair stand up on the back of my neck. Why does this have to happen? <laughs> 